It was a Wednesday hot day in Kampala and I was invited to a wedding party. For that, you need specific attires for that, like traditional clothing. So I set myself to go to town to go and buy those attires. As we left for town, I thought about it. I said to myself, you know what, let me just go get a quick haircut. So we made a quick stop at the barbershop. Very good guy from Eritrea, very kind person. We had a good chat, awesome moment. But then I had to rush to town to go get my Ugandan traditional kanzu. Kanzu means the same thing, I believe, in Swahili. Maybe also the same thing in Lingala, which is a Democratic Republic of Congo's language. <laughs> Kampala city center, what a view. Millions of people, okay, at least hundreds of thousands of people walking, scrambling with each other. Busy area, unbelievable view. You know, like Africa, like you've never seen before, if you've never been to Africa. So throughout the lines, we had to find a specific shop where they sell a specific kanzu for this type of specific event. And of course, as usual, I wanted just the best for myself. So we went to try and find the best. So this is very typical in Africa, in most African countries, you'll find a seller or a vendor selling clothing. You have to try it immediately outside. They don't specifically have a change room where you have to hide yourself. So you need to figure out a way to just try it on in public. So I tried three different ones that were not fitting me properly with these big guns. I had to find an appropriate kanzu, like bigger size, just weird. We finally got what we were looking for. I wanted something clean even though it was my very first time to wear it, I wanted something specific, something that shows my character. We believe we found our country, and I was excited. I was looking forward to this event. I knew it's going to be a bomb. And then we walked throughout city center trying to just grasp, breathe in the oxygen, understand the people, see what it feels like. As I walked a couple of times, I met a lot of people that recognized me. Many know me from the boxing, many know me from different other avenues. It is just great to really get this feeling. It's an amazing feeling. People coming to you, hi Zach, how are you doing? Nice to see you. It's such a good time to see. It's, it's, it's such an honor. It's also an honor for me. I appreciate that. Various people from Congo, from Ghana, from different places. The market in Kampala is crazy. It's nuts. So many people. It's overwhelming. It truly is. Even for an African person. You find like different avenues, you find markets underground, you, you, you could get lost. It's a labyrinth. You, you'll get lost if you have nobody, no guide. Good opportunity for thieves, especially if they can see that you don't belong there. But we were very prudent, very aware of what's happening. I just enjoyed this moment. Man, this is busy. The place is full. So many people from everywhere. Different cultures, different religions, you can see. Great. I went home happy, I achieved what I was looking to do. I got my kanzu and I was looking forward to the event. Very next morning, we woke up early. Adrian came home early because uh, this is a very good event. In fact, this is a traditional wedding. We had to go to the groom's house, get him, get together, and then go to the bride's house. I had to rush and do my things, you know, as an African person. We are very late. But yeah, you know, it's Africa. In Africa, we're always late. Yeah, we're always late. Stop acting up. So I'm going to take a quick shower. You know the typical thing they say we usually late. I don't know if it's truth, but yeah, we we're kind of a little late this time. We're trying hard to get better. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. So we had to drive outside Kampala for about 45 minutes, I think, if I'm correct, to a place named Gayaza, where we would get together, then go to the groom's family, and then set for the bride's family. In Africa, you don't just take a woman. We have to prove that we deserve her. We have to prove our love. And the best way to prove our love is through giving things, gifts. We don't put a price on a woman. It's a way to show how serious you are about this lady. So you bring presents to the family, get their blessing before you set together. And this is what the specific gentleman wanted to do. And then we met Joash, who is our groom of the day. Very well-kept gentleman, looking forward to do something very good. Him and his bride had been dating for eight years, 
and they share two beautiful kids together. It's just very inspiring to see a young man really fulfill his promise. I'm sure he made promises. Like many other young men, don't do it. They will get you pregnant and just disappear. And seeing a man after being eight years with a woman, achieving this, it's just very inspiring, very respectable. So we went to Joash's house for a little bit to get together before we leave with his friends and family. And to my surprise, they accepted me as one of theirs. They really treated me with so much comfort, so much respect. They sat me down, they offered me a plate of food such an amazing feeling in uganda you have like most african country three sessions of wedding you have the introduction that's when you you go meet the lady's parents you go get introduced to the, to the family as a future husband so you become officially fiance then you have the uh, the traditional wedding or the dowry uh, where you pay the the cows are, hey, how are you? I'm okay. You okay? I'm okay. Good to see you. Good to see you. Champion, nice yeah. to meet you. Good to see you. Good Everything see you. is okay? All is good, all is good. So number two is uh, where you pay whatever that's asked from you, which is a very common tradition in most African, I mean, most African countries. You don't just take the lady and go with her. That's not how it works. You must give the gift that, I mean, symbolic gift, that they ask you. Then the third wedding is whatever, the white wedding or the, whatever you call it. After 30 minutes wait, then we set off to the bride's area, which was like another distance. Like I felt completely asleep. I was out for about an hour. Then I woke up and we stopped somewhere like in a park just to make sure that everything is okay. Everybody made sure their clothes looked nice. Some, some of the guys actually wore their kanzu right there to look nice. Then you could see the excitement in there. You could see everybody get excited, some music playing, the groom feeling good, you know, everybody looking forward to the event. It was really, really, really exciting. Then we went through very small alley, like, you know, African side. You have the bush on the left, the bush on the right, and just a alley on the middle. It's just beautiful to see this. Different from the big buildings and industrial stuff, it's just so refreshing. The bride's family came to us, they were very happy. You could just see the excitement in the air, everybody very happy. Marriage is very important in Africa. Within many African communities, when a woman has a child before marriage, they perceive her somehow as a failure, even though they don't say it that way, but you are looked at as a failure. Like, how could you make children without having a husband? And in this very specific case where a guy have kids with a woman, then decide to come and marry her after eight years. It's just a mind-blowing event. We sat there like royalties. They treated us appropriately with all the glitz and glamour that you could get in Uganda. We ate abundantly like in any other African community. Food is never an issue. We don't look at those things. The happiness, the kindness, the dances. Then you got these two gentlemen talking to each other. One representing the man, the other one representing the woman. So basically, the man doesn't go speak to the woman's family by himself. He has a representative who talks on his behalf very kindly like, we're here for your daughter. Our son wants your daughter. We are happy to have her. In our family so he plays like the middle ground and what makes this even more exciting is the interaction between this man who represents the groom and the man that represents the lady it's just funny what they say to each other like they make jokes and it just makes the whole event even more enriching beautiful day excitement in there people dancing all these ladies very happy they just painted the whole party as a beautiful moment of life something surely nobody will forget. So on this event of introduction of Joash, we had to bring in the gift, the gift from the groom to the bride's family. He wasn't going to bring it by himself, of course, instead of the family, which are sort of represented with an honor, we had to carry the gift to the bride's family. Then my kanzu was acting up because it's my very, it's very long kanzu. It was very difficult to get. It was going through my legs and stuff. And I was just afraid that I might just fall in front of everybody. Just imagine a man weighing 180 kilograms <laughs> falling over in front of people would be a scandalous moment. So I was very careful with that. So in this event, you see all the gifts put on the ground and the ladies who are the aunties of the bride are there to represent the family. They receive the gift as a sign to show that we accept this gentleman in our family. What was touching for me also was the facial expression of the bride, the happiness, the wow, the at last I've got this. I really, really enjoyed seeing that smile in her face, seeing 
the accomplishment of a dream. In Africa, marriage is a lot. It was a beautiful event, an awesome moment, which I will never forget. I am looking forward to having more, much more stuff like this. It's so much experience, so much blessing to be indulged into, uh, so much diversity, so much happiness in the air, and I believe that's what everybody needs. It's been a beautiful day, great event, so much joy in the air. Unfortunately, we have to leave before it gets dark, because we are in the middle of nowhere and a great distance to accomplish tonight. So, oh, hopefully we bring you so much more stuff like this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time. And we're just starting, yeah.